So my sister is completely out of control. She can't stop just going out with boys, partying, and doing who knows what else. So my parents are fed up to hear, and they say, you know what? She's gonna live with you, buckaroo. Well, I don't know how to hang with my sister. We're not the same people. I'm a book nerd. All I do is read, study, uh, go to the library, go for a jog, and she parties like an animal. Well, this didn't stop her. So she comes to my house, starts partying as usual, and I tell my parents, hey, I can't deal with this. And you know what they tell me? Well, you're gonna have to find a way to deal with it because we're done with her. Okay. Well, I guess I have to take matters into my own hand. Hey guys, I'm in a bit of a pickle. I could really use some advice. My name's Jake, I'm a 26 year old, small business owner, and things have been going great. And see, I create portraits and paintings for clients and supply some home decor companies and interior design businesses. The demand is picking up, uh, well, which is exciting, but also a bit overwhelming. I live in a cozy rental apartment where I try to manage my time between creating art and keeping my business afloat. Let me give you some background of my situation. I come from a family of educators, my parents are both teachers, and they live out in the countryside and growing up, my sister Jenna was always the artsy type. She would sit for hours drawing or painting much like I do now, and our parents would just encourage us both to express our creativity. While I've turned that passion into a career, Jenna just finished school and is taking a gap year to figure out what she wants to do with her life. Initially, she seemed really enthusiastic about this break. She had dreams of traveling, picking up new skills, and maybe even dabbling in some art projects herself. So, about a month ago, I received a call from my parents and they informed me that they were sending Jenna to stay with me for a bit. I assumed it would be just for a few days. A short visit to help her adjust to her gap year, so I agreed, thinking it would be nice to spend some time together and maybe even show her the ropes of running a small business. I figured that we could have a few uh, fun outings, maybe explore the city and create some lasting memories together even. To be honest, I was kind of excited. The first couple of days went well. We reminisced about her childhood and talked about our interest and I even took her out to some local art galleries. It felt refreshing to have her around and I welcomed the change. But soon days turned into weeks and weeks turned into two and now it's been a whole month and Jenna is still here guys, like she's still here. <laughs> Ugh. Today I uh, went out and finally, and I mean finally asked her when she was planning on going home. She casually dropped the bombshell that she had not come for a vacation, but had moved in permanently. I asked her what she meant by that. Well, she just looked confused and asked me if mom and dad did not tell me. I was taken back at first. I thought she was joking, but the look on her face made me realize she wasn't. I'm still in shock, wondering how the hell my parents could do this to me. They don't pay my bills, so they don't get to make such decisions for my life especially when they're as important as sharing my own space. This is straight up outrageous. I called my parents right away asking what the hell it was about. And what I learned was even more shocking. Mom had lost her job and since dad was the only one earning, he wasn't making a lot as a kindergarten teacher. But their elder child, I uh, told them that it's okay. And I'll take care of her, but deep down, I can't help but feel it's been very unfair to me. I mean, I get it, I should help them out, but I also don't want to compromise my personal space. Especially my business, I'm working so hard for. I plan on expanding it, opening a studio, maybe hiring staff to handle client dealings, and basically painting, but uh, now it seems impossible. Don't get me wrong. I love my sister, but I did not anticipate having a roommate, especially not during such a busy time for my business. Before any of you say that it's just my sister and I should act like a brother, I know that too, but I want to remind you all that I'm a small business owner and this is the only source of income that I have. Since Jenna moved in, I've taken an extra expenses, from groceries to utilities and while I love my sister, I didn't anticipate needing to budget for her day-to-day -day needs. 
It's one thing to have her over for dinner occasionally, it's another to have her living here full time. She doesn't have a job, nor does she have any contributions much to the household from finances to house chores. Let's talk about my apartment for a second. It's like a three-room place that I decorated to serve as both a living space and my art studio. It's full of my work, canvases in various stages of completion, paint supplies scattered around, and art books lining the shelf. I've created a space that inspires me and allows me to focus on my creativity. Now, I find myself sharing my living space with someone who doesn't have a clear understanding of the boundaries that come with living together. You know, Jenna's stuff is everywhere. She brought a suitcase full of clothing, a few art supplies, and her endless collection of electronic devices for music and streaming shows. It's not just about having my space invaded, it's the mental shift that has taken place. I often have to step out of my room where I'm in the middle of something important, and it can be really frustrating. There's no easy way to concentrate on my work with the constant bustle around me. Well, guys, that's not all. Jenna is in a phase of exploration. She's out late with friends, sometimes coming home at odd hours, and I find it hard to concentrate with the noise. My work often requires early mornings, so I need to balance my schedule with hers, which isn't easy. It feels like I'm constantly having to adapt to her lifestyle while she doesn't even seem to consider me. It was okay when she was over here just for a few days, but it's not the case now. And if I'm being honest, Jenna has a knack for being a little annoying. She knows no boundaries and becomes excessively intrusive, and when she's not doing her thing, she just decides to poke her nose into mine. Like, a few days ago, she walked into my room while I was painting. I like to work in total solitude, but I said I'd never mind as long as she doesn't say a word. But no, it's Jenna after all. She starts nitpicking on my painting style and the color choice. She even went as far as to pick the brush up and adding more quote vibe. The painting was ruined, I was mad, and still I didn't say anything, thinking it was just a matter of a few days and she will finally be gone. Well, but no. She's not going anywhere, and I could not be any more angrier. Oh, and most importantly, it's all been done without discussing it with me first. How could my parents do this to me? It's been a month, and I feel like things have only gotten more complicated. When she's out, she makes me worry because she stays out late, and when she's home, she's blasting music continuously, not caring that my livelihood depends on focus. It's getting out of hand, and... I don't know if it continues how I'm going to keep up with this. I also worry about how this is affecting our relationship. I don't want to be that brother who just demands things from her without understanding her perspective. But I also feel like I have to write to express my concern. I've been trying to balance my business and family obligations, but it feels like it's coming at the expense of the life that I built for myself. Especially when I didn't sign up for all of this, you know? The longer this goes on, the more I feel like I need to address the situation. I've considered suggesting that she contributes a small amount to rent or groceries to help the balance of the financial strain. I think this could help her understand the value of shared responsibilities. I don't want to come off as a jerk or a brother of, or son, but it feels way out of line. But I'm not sure how to bring it up with her. So here I am, feeling a bit lost and overwhelmed trying to figure out the best way to handle the situation. I love my sister dearly, but this sudden shift in our living arrangements has thrown me for a loop. I need your advice, guys. I'm looking forward to any advice that I get, so thanks for your time reading this. Comment number one, negative comment of the day. OP, you gotta chill a bit. I mean, it's your sister, not some random roommate. You're acting like she's just taking over your entire life or something. I mean, yeah, it's a bummer. Having to share your personal space, but you're also family, come on. Have you ever thought maybe she's just trying to figure herself out? It's not like she moved in with a master plan to ruin your life. Just sit down, talk it out, dude. You're overreacting by a mile. You know, instead of whining about her being a parasite, maybe help her find a job or something instead of just complaining. Family's supposed to support each other, and guess what? 
That includes putting up with each other's quirks. If you can't handle it, maybe you need to step back and rethink how you see your relationship with her. Just saying. Comment number two, a positive comment of the day. Dude, are you kidding me? Your sister's literally a parasite mooching off you. While uh, you bust your butt to keep your business afloat, what kind of lazy loser just decides to move in and think it's cool? Like she finished school and uh, thinks that she can just freeload on her big brother's kindness? If she wanted to take a gap year, she should have planned for it, not just crashed at your place like she owns it. Seriously, it's time to put your foot down and stop enabling her. You're not a babysitter, you're trying to run a business here, and if she can't respect your space and hustle, then maybe it's time to kick her to the rocks and teach her a lesson about adulting. Life is not a permanent vacation, Jenna. Update number one. First of all, Thank you for the positive feedback on my last post. I do appreciate the support and insights. I want to share a quick update on how things have been going since Jenna moved in. Spoiler alert, it's a wild one. So, after it's been official, Jenna has really started to come out of her shell. She's always been super social, and soon enough, she made a bunch of new friends in the area. I was actually pretty happy for her at first. I felt like she was starting to embrace this gap year and make the most of it. Uh, they would hang out, go to coffee shops, and hit up local art spots, which I thought was great for her creativity. I mean, she's my little sister, and I wanted her to have a fun um, exploration of life. But here's where it gets a bit sticky. At some point, Jenna's social life went from casual outings to full-on party mode. Initially, it did not bother me much. I mean, she's 18, and I remember being that age, staying out late and having a blast with friends was all part of the experience. I was off for her enjoying herself, but soon enough, she started bringing those friends back to my place after their adventures. The idea of having a bunch of loud teenagers hanging around there, where I usually work, just doesn't sit right with me. But at first, I tried to roll with it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, and oh boy, did I underestimate. It started innocently enough, with a few people stopping by to hang out after dinner. I would hear laughter and loud music drifting into my workspace, but then it escalated. Suddenly, they were more and more and more people than I could even count, and I was constantly dodging them left, right, and center as I tried to focus on my work. My usual early morning routine of painting and managing orders became harder to maintain. I found myself working up late and late and later and trying to catch up a moment apiece before the chaos began. The uh, first big party I encountered it happened last Friday. I'd been working late into the night to meet a client deadline, only to come out of my room to find my entire living space transformed into a mini rave. There were lights flashing, music blasting, and about eight of Jenna's friends dancing around like they owned the place. I stood there, mouth agape, feeling like I'd just stepped into someone else's world. I tried to remain calm and put on a brave safe. But inside, I was freaking out. I quietly retreated back to my room, but let me tell ya. The noise level was unacceptable. It was unbearable. I could barely think, let alone concentrate on the painting I was in the middle of. I ended up shutting my door and blasting music through my headphones just to drown out the chaos. What frustrated me the most was how inconsiderate I felt. I'd walked out for a glass of water or something, and it was like I was the one intruding. I would see cups littered everywhere, random clothing sprung about, and not a care in the world for the mess that they were leaving behind. Sure, it's her home now too, but I never signed up for this level of chaos when I agreed to let her stay. I even tried to bring it up to Jenna in a very casual manner, like, hey, can we keep it down a bit, girl? I need to focus. But every time I mentioned it, she just brushed it off, claiming it was just her friends wanting to hang out. I don't want to come off as the grumpy older brother, but I also need to prioritize my business and mental health. Now I'm stuck in a tough pickle. I genuinely do want to support Jenna in her new phase of life, but I also can't compromise my work. It's all piling up and I'm starting to feel resentment brewing. You know, right beneath the surface, my patience is wearing thin. I need to figure out how to handle this before I completely lose it. Updates number two. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.
Hey guys. I wish that I had better news, but things have gone from bad to worse, and I'm honestly at my wit's end here. Jenna's parties aren't just uh, once in a while. They become a regular event, and my apartment has turned into the designated after-party spot. It's non-stop chaos. People are constantly coming and going, and it's messing with my sleep big time. I'm up late trying to paint while they party in the living room, and by the time I'm able to catch a few hours of shut-eye, it's already dawn. Most days, I'm running on fumes and caffeine, and it's taking a serious toll. You know, what's even worse is how my business has been affected. My productivity has dropped, my deadlines are slipping, and I'm losing clients left and right because I just can't deliver work like I used to. My workspace is cluttered, my materials are getting misplaced thanks to Jenna's friends using my supplies for who knows what. And my creative flow, yeah, that's pretty much non-existent. I never thought letting my sister crash here would put me in jeopardy of losing my career. But that's exactly what's happening. And if that wasn't enough, now Jenna's boyfriend has entered the picture. He's here almost every day, treating my apartment like it's his second home, and I'll come out of my room to grab a coffee and find him lounging on the couch playing a video game, or rummaging through my kitchen like he's the one paying rent. I tried to be polite at first, but it's getting to the point where it feels like I'm the guest here. Even worse, he's just as loud as Jenna and her friends, blasting music or talking at the top volume as he owns the place. You think it can't get any worse, but let me tell you, and I now have teenagers hitting at me too. <laughs> Ugh, Jenna has a friend who's been coming around a lot and she has a thing for me. I don't mean a little crush, I mean the girl has straight up tried to seduce me. At first, I thought she was just being overly friendly, but then she starts making some very uncomfortable advances, and it's honestly kind of creepy. She once waited until Jenna was asleep and then tried to get all flirty with me, invading my personal space and making me feel super uncomfortable, and I had to be blunt with her. But it hasn't stopped her from hitting on me whenever she uh, wants to. I don't want to make a scene, but at this point I'm dreading every time Jenna's friends come over because I never know what's going to happen. So yeah, I finally hit my breaking point. After one particularly bad night when I could not get any work done, I picked up the phone and called my parents. I laid it all out, the constant parties, the noise, the boyfriend basically moving in, and the friends who have been making uh, moves on me. I thought surely they would understand and help me figure this out. Their response was this. You're her older brother. You need to deal with it, man. Yourself. They think that I should just be more patient and give her a chance to learn responsibility, but honestly, it's costing me too much. I'm tired, I'm stressed, and my life feels like it's spiraling out of control because of the situation. So after some sleepless nights and endless frustrations, I've made up my mind. Jenna has to go. I'm not saying I don't love her or... Ah, that I'd want her to struggle. But this arrangement, it's not working. It's beyond a simple sibling disagreement. It's actively hurting my mental health, my business, my personal life, and I know it's going to be a tough conversation. I'm honestly not even sure how to approach it. She's going to be blindsided, and I have no idea where she'll go. But I can't keep living like this, sacrificing everything I've worked for just to keep the peace. Updates number three. I didn't want it to resort to this, but desperate times call for desperate measures. After my last update, I gave Jenna a final warning to work something out. I asked her to come with me to our parents' house for a sit down, and I figured maybe they would see the situation for what it is as if we're all together. Jenna, of course, saw right through my plan. She straight up refused, saying she did not need to go back and that I was just trying to dump her. <laughs> I realized that moment that she was not going to leave unless I made it happen. She'd gotten comfortable, and I was the one paying the dime. So I decided to go to plan B. This plan was a little drastic, but honestly, I didn't see another way. One way or the other, I was going to have this happen. So one night, when Jenna was out with her friends, I got to work. I started by packing up her stuff, everything, clothes, shoes, makeup, random trinkets. If it was hers, it was in a bag. 
It felt weird packing up my sister's stuff, but it was me at the breaking point, and there was no turning back when you're at the breaking point. Once everything was packed, I loaded it into my car piece by piece, filled up the trunk to the rim. With her stuff ready to go, I called a locksmith. I had him change the locks at my apartment door and gave me a new set of keys. No more random strangers walking into my place and no more uninvited after parties. It felt like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders knowing that I'd finally have my home back. I waited outside in my vehicle, just down the block. Sure enough, Jenna showed up a little after midnight and she had no idea what was coming. When she got to the door and tried her key, it didn't work. She jiggled the handle, I could see it. Tried uh, the lock again and again and starts to look around, clearly confused. I got out of my car and called her over, telling her we need to talk. She saw her bags already loaded up and knew what was happening, but she tried to argue, saying she had nowhere else to go and that I was being unreasonable. She even tried getting into the apartment again, but it wasn't happening. Finally, she just said, ah, and realized she had no choice. With no other option, Jenna gets into the car. It was a quiet ride over to our parents' house, and she was fuming. I was just relieved this ordeal was almost over. I felt bad for a second, seeing her sitting there, angry, disappointed. Every time I thought about the countless sleepless nights, the chaos, the boyfriend acting like my place was his, and her friend's weird advances, I knew I was doing the right thing. So... When we got to our parents' house, I unloaded her bags on the porch and knocked on the door and my parents answered, looking surprised to see us at this hour in the night, especially with all of Jenna's things. I told them Jenna needs a place to stay and this is the only place that I could take her. And, you know, this is where she's going to handle her growing pains. They looked at me a little stunned but did not say anything, so I didn't stay around long enough to debate. I just told them to please make sure she wasn't homeless, but that my apartment is not an option. Jenna did not say much, but I could tell that she was holding back a lot. She grabbed her bags without looking back and went inside. I wanted to be a good brother and help her get on her feet, but not at the expense of my own peace and career. She was just taking advantage of the situation, and I could not keep living in that mess. So that's it. I know some of you might think that I went too far. But I feel like this was my only option. I needed my life back. And hopefully this will be a wake-up call for Jenna to get serious about her own responsibilities. Thank you for your advice and support along the way. I could not have done this without it. Update number four. You guys have been dying for an update, so here it is. Finally, I'm back in my apartment, and while things are quieter and I'm able to focus on my work, I'll be honest. It doesn't feel as satisfying as I thought that it would. Over the last few days, my phone has been blowing up with calls and texts from my parents and Jenna. They've been telling me about how they're struggling with Jenna's antics, hinting that they need support and that the family should stick together. Their words started weighing on me. I felt like maybe I'd gone too far by dumping her. The guilt crept in and I wondered if I've made a mistake by walking away. After wrestling with my conscience for a bit, I decided that if they really needed my help, I could still support them in some way without turning my life upside down again. I figured I'd offer to help them out financially if they were having trouble handling Jenna's expenses. Maybe I'd even offer to get her set up on her own place. If that could be, you know, me in the middle ground. I knew they were getting older and taking care of Jenna wasn't easy. Maybe I owed them such. So I packed up for a quick trip to head back, and as I pulled into town, I ended up running into my old neighbor, Mr. Anderson, while stopping at the local store. We started to chit-chat, and he was surprised to see me back so soon. Eventually, the conversation turned to Jenna. He casually mentioned how, quote, the whole neighborhood was relieved that she had gone to stay with me. Confused, I asked him what the hell he meant, and that's when he spilled the beans. Apparently, Jenna had been causing trouble uh, for nearly everybody in town. She was constantly out late, throwing loud parties, and even getting into arguments with every single neighbor. People had been complaining to my parents, and it's gotten to the point where they were more than happy to let her move in with me. But the shocking part? Mr. Anderson mentioned that my parents' financial situation was fine. My mom's job was going well, and they were pretty comfortable. 
They had no need for financial support, they just didn't want to deal with Jenna's mess, and knew that I'd fall for it if they hinted that they were in a crisis. I realized I've been played by my own family like a fiddle. The guilt I've been carrying around, the guilt that got me to drive all the way here, was all based on a phony lie. I decided to just head back home without stopping by my parents' place. On the way back, I call my parents, still hoping there might be some kind of explanation that would make this all make sense. When I confront them about what I'd learned from Mr. Anderson, there was a long pause and then they admitted. They told me everything. When I told them how hurt I was and that they owed me an apology, things took a turn. Instead of apologizing, they doubled down. They said that if they had not told me what they did, I never would have agreed to let Jenna stay with me. By the end of the call, I was exhausted and done. I told them that they crossed the line, and if that's how they viewed family, then maybe we were better off for some distance. I made it clear that I did not want them calling me again, and that they should handle Jenna's issues themselves from now on. So that's where I'm at. I'm heartbroken, honestly, and I never thought my own parents would take advantage of me like this. But here we are. I don't know what's next for my family and me, but I know I need some space to figure it out. Thank you, everybody, who's been following this. It's helped me more than you know. Update number five. This is the final update of the story. Hey guys, I didn't think I'd have anything else to say, but here we are. Although I guess it's going to be the last update, a few weeks went by and honestly, I was finally starting to feel like myself again. Work was getting back on track and I had my peace. Then out of the blue, I get a call from my parents. Jenna, she was abusing some illicit stuff. And they were quite worried about her at this point and they tell me that Jenna has completely gone off the rails. Spends all day doing illicits and being on uh, very bad stuff. And One day she did not even return home. After searching for hours, they found her passed out beneath a bridge. They were afraid at this point that they may end up losing her, their precious daughter, if they had not turned a blind eye to all her nonsense and self-sabotaging actions, things would have not gone this far. And instead of taking responsibility for it, they tried to pin this burden on me. Now, there's no use moping over it, right? Still, despite the hurt and betrayal, I suggested them to admit her to rehab. But no, they didn't even bother thinking about that, and began asking me for money, like I was nothing to them but an ATM machine. I realized it was done with me being the doormat, so I hung up right then and there, and did not return any of their calls and messages after that. After a few days, I came across Mr. Anderson, who told me that Jenna was finally in rehab, but due to low finances, it was really a crappy institute. The worst part was everybody in the neighborhood found out, especially how instead of addressing her problem, they tried to get rid of her by sending her to me. Now, everyone's blaming them and calling them bad parents. As of now, I don't plan on being there to support them. Maybe I never will. They're still asking for help, but I refuse to be dragged into these issues that they created and are suffering the consequences for. Comment number one. From the final post. OP, you've done more than enough for your family. You went through all the drama, took care of your sister, even showed them the option of rehab, and they still tried to use you as a bank. Nah, man, that's not it. You can't keep carrying their responsibility just because they don't want to handle it. Sometimes people have to face the mess they made, and it sounds like your parents needed this wake-up call. Boundaries are healthy. You're not their ATM or their backup plan. You've got a life and a career to focus on, and honestly, you deserve some peace without all this toxicity. Stay strong and don't feel guilty for protecting your sanity. Comment number two. Bro, I get your parents messed up, but you're kind of sounding like you're dragging this out, dude. Yeah, they lied, they suck, but Jenna's still your sister. And now she's actually getting the help that she needs, and if they're really struggling to pay for her help, couldn't you just help a bit? I mean, come on, it's just rehab fees. Not like they're asking you to take her in again. You've already gotten your peace back, your life back is on track. Maybe helping a little wouldn't hurt. I don't know, feels like you're holding on to a grudge here. 
And honestly, it's a Jenna who's gonna suffer if they can't afford a good rehab. Just think it over, OP. You might regret being so harsh later on. 